Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the eighth in a nine-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a VRO lab environment on top of VMware Fusion. In this video, what we're going to be taking a look at is how to install and launch the VRO client. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to connect to that VRO server that we just installed in the previous video. All right, to get things started, as you can see, I'm already in my Windows VM, and in here, well, that's the vSphere web client we're looking at. I'm, I'm going to actually minimize that, and uh, I've been using Chrome all this time. Let's just switch things up a bit here. Let's use uh, Internet Explorer to do the next part. What we're going to be doing here is uh, using a utility that comes with Orchestrator called the VRO client or the Orchestrator client, whatever you want to call it. That's the, the main tool that you're going to be using as an Orchestrator developer to, to create workflows, debug workflows, run workflows, modify workflows, and so forth. So it's a very commonly used tool. And it comes in different flavors. Uh, one of the flavors that it comes in is a standalone application that you can install. Uh, another is the, the form that I'm going to be using it, which is uh, I'm going to fire up a browser, and uh, s since the Orchestrator client's a Java app, I could fire up theoretically any browser that supports Java and start running this Orchestrator client. So let me start up Internet Explorer. Again, since I said Java, we need to make certain that we have Java in the system. Uh, I've intentionally removed Java from my system, so I'm going to be forced in this video to show you how to do this. If you already have Java installed in your environment, you can skip forward in this video. If you've installed Java a bazillion times before, you'll find the following pretty boring. So let's see here. I'm going to go to, uh, where is where is it? HTTP colon slash slash, only I could type, colon slash slash, www.java.com slash download. So I'm going to the Java website to download Java. And here I am going to click on the button labeled free Java download. I'm going to click on the Agree and Start Free Download button. Uh, notice, by the way, the version I'm getting here is version 8, update 91. You don't need to have that specific version, but you do need to have Java. And I'm going to choose to save this file, or if I want to, I could just run it. I'll tell you that. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, why don't we just run it? Okay, so it starts downloading the file. It's 10% downloaded. Uh, I'm on a hotel network here. It is not the fastest network in the world, so let me speed up the video here. Okay, so now we're being asked uh, whether or not we want to run this Java installer. We're going to click Yes. And in the Java installer, we're being asked things like, would you like to change the destination folder? Eh, I'll just go with the default one. I could read the license and so forth, but I just want to install it. So I'm going to click on Install. Starts downloading the installer. Again, blazing fast hotel network here. Let me speed up the video. All right, so the Java installer has been downloaded. And as you can see, the Java installer is now running. And it's giving us the option of installing all sorts of exciting things, none of which I want. You can choose for yourself whether you want those things. I don't want those things. So I'm going to click the Next button. And the Java installer starts installing Java. Again, I'll speed up the video here. And as you can see, I have successfully installed Java, which is a necessary prerequisite to running the Orchestrator client. I'm going to click Close. Uh, window is going to pop up here. Uh, what the heck, we'll click Agree and Continue. Uh, this is a window that allows me to verify that Java is installed correctly. Uh, let me click Enable. Fingers crossed. Come on, Java, do your thing. And... As you can see, Java is now successfully running something. Do I want to run this application? Sure, this is just a verification application, presumably letting me know if it's running. And in fact, it is running. We're now running Java version 8, update 91. If you've never installed Java before, give yourself a pat on the back. That was terribly exciting. Okay, so we've got Java installed. 
at this point, uh, again, we can install the standalone Java, excuse me, we could install the standalone orchestrator client, or we could do what we're going to do, which is to simply fire up a browser. And in that browser, we're going to go to HTTP colon slash slash VRO, uh, in my case, dot VVORC dot info. Uh, you obviously would want to change that URL to something more appropriate for your environment. But in effect, what that URL is doing, if you haven't already figured this out, is it's pointing the browser at your orchestrator server. When you do so, it takes you to a page. Hang on, self-signed certificate issues here. So let me click on continue to this website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you go to that URL, it takes you to this screen where you've got a whole bunch of different links you can click on. For instance, I told you there's a standalone version of the orchestrator client. Let me open that up in another one. Another Hey, how come I can't open up another tab? Let me let me open that up. Oh, okay, that's why. Um, the this is where you go to download standalone versions of the orchestrator client. This is what I was alluding to before. But we're going to do things a little differently here. We're actually going to simply click on uh, this link here to launch the orchestrator client. Or if, if you want, what you could do is you could right click here, and it'd probably be even better if you were to actually save. Uh, what this link is pointing to. What is this link pointing to? Uh, notice down here in the bottom it says it's pointing to a file called client.jnlp. That's a Java... What does JNLP stand for? Uh, somebody look it up in wikipedia.org. That's that's a Java file it's, and it contains the orchestrator client. I could run the orchestrator client by coming into this web page and clicking on this link every single time, but it's going to be easier if I just right click it and choose to save that JNLP file someplace. For instance, why don't I save it on my desktop? And instead of calling it just plain old client.jnlp, let's give it a more descriptive name, like orchestrator client. And then I'll click save. The download is completed. Now I could open it up here, but let me actually close this window here and close the browser. And uh, for a reason I won't, uh, go into actually I will right. I'm hiding icons on my desktop Let's see if I can remember how to unhide them so personalize do, 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 do. Uh, show desktop icons I give up I can't find it uh, tell you what, I'm gonna cheat here so normally you would have an icon <laughs> normally you would see an icon on your desktop called orchestrator client .jnlp. because I'm hiding uh, icons on my desktop and I never remember how to unhide them without spending about five or ten minutes. I'm just going to cheat here and open up Windows Explorer and I'll go to the desktop and sure enough, where is it hiding? Here's my orchestrator client file. So normally that'd be on the desktop and I just double click it. So I'm going to double click it here. And as you can see, it's starting up the orchestrator client. It's a Java app. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I want to continue. Uh, by the way, notice that URL up above mentions port number 8281. That's one of several different port numbers, uh, one of two in particular that are really, really important in Orchestrator. If you want to know more about Orchestrator, such as what's that port number, what's the other mystery port number I'm alluding to, join me in the classroom sometime. I'd be happy to explain what that's all about. But for our purposes now, we're just going to click Continue. Okay, it's verifying the application. Are you sure you want to do this? Uh, normally I would click this checkbox here so that this window doesn't keep popping up, but in case I blow it on this video and need to do this again, I'm going to leave it unchecked. You'll probably want to check this checkbox. But ultimately, one way or another, we're going to click this Run button, and in a few moments, we'll see the login screen of the Orchestrator client. And in that login screen, we can choose who we're going to log in as. By default, there's an account called VCO Admin. And if I recall correctly, the password is exactly the same. VCO Admin, which I just fat fingered there. Let me try typing that again. A-D-M-I-N. So I'm logging into my orchestrator server as that account. Default password is the same name as the default account. I'll click Login. And are you sure you want to do this? There's a self-signed certificate that we encountered. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I want to do this. Uh, ordinarily, I'd click this checkbox so that it, that uh, I don't keep seeing this window, but I'm going to leave it unchecked in case I need to redo this video. But one way or another, whether you check this checkbox or not, you need to click the Ignore button to continue forwards. And here we go. The big moment is about to arrive. It's logging into the orchestrator server. 
Our orchestrator client is connecting. It's opening a window and here we have the orchestrator client connected to our orchestrator server. And now that we're connected, we've got everything set up in our lab environment, we can start writing and running and using orchestrator workflows. And we're gonna do that, but not right now, not in this video. To build up suspense, I'm gonna cut this video here and we're gonna go to video number nine, where you're gonna actually see how to create and run an orchestrator workflow. So don't bail out on me now. Go see the next video in this video series, video number nine. Let's go see how to create and run orchestrator workflows.